maybe uh, just a couple questions if I could have the uh, faculty turn on their, their webcam. We're running uh, a little bit late, so I think we'll just, uh, we'll just have just two, two questions I'll ask the, uh, the faculty as, as they come on here. Um, there, there's, as I mentioned, uh, there have been uh, some presentations and, and uh, papers on doing a uh, so-called soft ladder J, where you leave out the bone block and, and just place the uh, soft tissue onto the neck of the gonad. And actually, that was actually it's still an old old procedure. I know Pascal, your arthroscopic Bristol technique, you would inset the um, the tip tip of the coracoid, bringing the soft tissue very close to the gonad edge. Maybe I'll, I'll start with you, Pascal. What, do you, do you see any role of just doing a pure soft tissue uh, conjoint tendon uh, transfer as opposed to bringing a bony block also? Uh, yes, I, I've done this procedure just with soft tissue using just the conjoint tendon uh, in hyperlax patients. Uh, however, however uh, you can get the same results by doing the classical latarge procedure and it's safer because you have also the bone block procedure in addition to the to the sling effect of the conjoint tendon. And well, Laurent, uh, when you do these arthroscopically, uh, I guess sometimes the, the uh, coracoid can, can fracture in your hands, or at least in my hands. Um, uh, do you sometimes do just a soft tissue conjoint tendon transfer, or always, always with the block? I think uh, Laura may be on mute. How about uh, the others, uh, George, uh, Lisa, Joaquin? Uh, I guess I've been uh, fortunate not to have one fracture yet, but I've been prepared for that. Uh, typically, I do a ladder J, so uh, if it's going to fracture at one hole, hopefully I still have one hole left. And then uh, a trick taught to uh, Paul Favorito is to just use a suture anchor and to secure the rest of the tendon to give some rotational stability. Okay. Yep. I think uh, if you haven't uh, had yes, a fracture Lisa. yet, uh, so I think that's a good alternative, though. It's certainly something to keep in mind that you could just do it really a soft tissue tenodesis, but I haven't had that happen. I think I just uh, will finish up with one, one more question. Uh, I think uh, uh, some of us, uh, particularly maybe an older patient, have been talking about uh, the role of reverse shoulder arthroplasty for failed uh, instability. Maybe I'll start with uh, Gilles. Uh, do you see a, a role for uh, a reverse in some, some of these patients that have had multiple uh, procedures? A lot of them are starting to be pre-arthritic or, frankly, arthritic, even though they may have a, may have a young age. I did not do that yet. I don't believe that it's a good uh, idea because usually the patient had many previous surgery. Uh, it's not always the best case. And... Uh, I would not propose a reverse even after many favor of uh, different type of prosthesis. I would rather recommend to do a fusion because those patients are in the 40s, as said uh, by Joachim, and uh, so I have no experience of the reverse, but I would not recommend it. Yeah, I feel and the same way as Scott. You know, most of these patients are so young. You know, they're in their 30s most of the time when I see them. So I consider an arthroplasty, I think, uh, is risky because of the chance for, for complications. And infection. Uh, I agree. Well, I think uh, we're running a little bit over, um, uh, gentlemen and, and Lisa. I think uh, I want to thank uh, everybody for participating uh, in, in this uh, symposium. And I want to thank uh, Roman and Anjanette for helping to put, put this all together. Roman, I'll put it back in your hands.